or close enough. All right, before we get started, <coughs> well, actually, we are going to get started. Before we get into all that good stuff that Joe didn't want to read. I want you guys to think and re remember, if you remember anything, remember this. You know, we have, and it doesn't, it doesn't just apply to fire service, it applies in society in general. <coughs> we have principles, rules, absolutes, things that don't change, regardless of what it is. My birthday, November 17th. It's November 17th. It doesn't, you, I, you can't go, well, no, Pat, I think it's going to be November 15th. No, that's wrong. <laughs> it's just, that is an absolute. How I celebrate my birthday is, an, is a technique, opinion, you know, theory, whatever you want to call it. You know, <clears throat> I don't do anything. I, it's just another day. When you get, to, when you turn 49, nobody gives a shit about your birthday. <laughs> All right. Weekly's birthday's when? Uh, okay, <laughs> it's like the whole month. <laughs> February 9th is Weekly's birthday. That's absolute. That does not change. How he celebrates it is in a technique, opinion, whatever he wants to do that he enjoys doing on his birthday. Now, he might take that whole week and party. You know, I don't do anything. Is his right? Is mine right? Is his wrong or mine wrong? No, it's right for him. There is no right or wrong when we talk about techniques and opinions. <coughs> In today's society, we don't understand that. I don't know why, <laughs> but for some reason we don't understand that, oh, well, okay, yeah, that's, that works for you, that's good. You know, that doesn't work for me. I don't want to party all week because it would probably kill me. I can't do that anymore. You know. <coughs> don't get caught up in that or actually on the flip side of that realize what you we're doing and talking about and understand the difference between an absolute and a technique you know there you know, how I raise a ladder compared to how Joe raises a ladder may be different it doesn't make mine wrong and his right or mine right and his wrong. You know, we need to focus, you want to focus on the goal. What's the goal? What's the end game? You know, I want Joe to open the roof. I don't care how he does it. I want him to do it safe, obviously. I care about that. But his technique of getting up on the roof and cutting a hole, I don't really care. You know, because the end game is I need a hole in the roof, put a hole in the roof. You know, if he uses a straight beam, if he uses an extension ladder, if he uses an aerial, if he has Batman's super slingshot bat gun and he goes and it pulls him up like that, cool. You know, that works for him. <coughs> Don't get hung up on that because we're going to start talking about things in these two chapters <coughs> that people they and them have told you this is what you do, you know, and you've nodded your head because you guys are all good firefighters and said, yep, okay, this is what we do, you know. So don't be surprised if while we're going through this today, I disprove <laughs> some of those this is what you do, okay. You know, I'm going to give you the rules, the absolutes. What's up, bub? Good, I'm good. Here, pass that back to him. Um, <coughs> and that too. <coughs> you know, to give you all the knowledge you need to be able to go, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. You know, I don't think that works, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't get confused and hung up on that because before long, and it's going to be sooner rather than later, it just is not going to seem that way to you. You all are going to be on this side of the tables talking to crews 
about things and how they're supposed to work and how they don't work, you know, and stuff like that. It's coming, you know. It doesn't seem that way right now, but it comes pretty fast, you know. And I want you to have that ability to, to digest fact from fiction, you know. <clears throat> All right, because we muddy the waters a lot about different things, you know, and I'll be able to recognize what somebody's opinion or technique is compared to an absolute or, or a true fact, you know, and what works for them works for them. That's fine. Don't get hung up on that. You know, that's cool. Focus on the end game, whatever that is, okay? <coughs> now, some of our absolutes. Our inch and three-quarter hose and our three-inch hose. <coughs> what do we test those at? What pressure do we test those fire hose at? 300 pounds, right? That does not change. We're all uh, in agreement with that. That is a fact. All right. What about five inch? Huh? All right. That is a fact. None of you all have been on long enough. Uh, maybe so. Any of you remember, has anybody ever told you 200? Or have you ever heard that? You, you probably have. You, you probably have. <coughs> That's fine. That's what we used to test that at. <coughs> I may have to get some more of those. If I do, I'll do that later before we started tinkering with and playing with using 5-inch as discharge hose, we just strictly used it as supply hose, right, hydrant to the pumper. <coughs> when we only used it for that, we tested it at two, 200. Recently, within your time frame, <coughs> we have messed with it a little bit and now we know we'll use it sometimes, not all the time. We don't have to use it as a discharge hose where we're actually pushing water through it. We increase that test pressure. All right, so yes, it's 250 pounds. That is a fact, does not change. All right, now, this is the interesting part because you guys, it's gonna depend on what you say. <coughs> How many gallons per minute is my goal that I want to get out of an inch and three quarter attack line? Does everybody agree with 125? Uh, I don't know, Pat. I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <coughs> Technically, you're wrong. Our goal is 150 gallons per minute per attack line for each line, all right? So if anybody outside the Louisville Fire Department asks and talks about it, that's your answer. You know, and the reason it is that is because the NFPA standard now recommends a minimum of 150 gallons per minute on an attack line for an interior attack. That's where that number comes from, all right? Before that NFPA standard changed, it, we, it was 125 gallons where you all are, that's what you all said because that's what you were told. <coughs> that's where you're getting that 125 gallons per minute, all right? <coughs> that technically, technically is wrong. It's 150. Now, with that being said, and I'm not telling you guys right now to say, nope, okay, well, if that's what that NFPA standard says, I'm starting, I'm pumping 150, I'm getting 150 gallons a minute out of that line. Slow your roll. <laughs> with that being said, NFPA standard also recommends how many people on an attack line? Two. Two. 
How many people do we put on an attack line? One. Right? Now, technically, I can say, well, you got Cap and whoever's on the nozzle. You know, but we all know in the real world that's not how that works. You know, <coughs> he might, he or she might be on it for a minute, getting it in, getting you set up. All right, yep, 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 and then they're off. They're opening a wall, they're opening a ceiling, they're doing a quick search, whatever it is. You know, so we don't. In reality, no, we only have one. <coughs> so, would you rather have the pressure at 150 gallons per minute or handling the pressure at 125 gallons a minute? 120, yeah. Let's all not macho up right now because we'll all go outside and I'll destroy you all. <laughs> I'll be like, okay, let's go. You know, yes. So <coughs> that's where those numbers come from and you're going to hear different numbers very depending on who you talk to. You know, and that's what, and, and, and they're both right. You know, if somebody says 150 gallons per minute, yeah, you're right, because that's what the NFPA standard recommends. You know, our old standard was 125 gallons per minute. You know, and me, personally, I'm okay with staying with that because we don't have a dedicated two-person attack line. That's not how we operate. That's not how the Louisville Division of Fire operates. That's not how most fire departments operate. We don't have that second person on there to help manage that stuff. All right, clear? <coughs> All right. What about our blitz fires? What do we want to get out of that? Why? I don't know, because somebody told me. <laughs> somebody did tell you. <coughs> Can we get more out of it? Mm, I don't know. We, can we get less out of it? Okay. <laughs> we can definitely get less out of everything. All right. Yes, we can get more out of it. But... <coughs> And, and, to, and to simplify the everything that Joe was honest, eno honest enough to say, I don't want to read that chapter. There's way too many numbers in it. <coughs> it's a one three-inch line, right? And to simplify everything, we get 500 gallons per minute out of one three-inch line. That's what we've decided based on different testings. Can we get more? Yeah, I've gotten up to 112 gallons a minute out of one three inch line before it exploded. Do we wanna operate that way? Well, no. You know, it's, we gotta consider risk management, right? If I know I can get 500 and it be safe for everybody involved, that's a safe number, that's what we're gonna stay with. Can we get more? Yes. Do I want you to try to get more? No, I don't. You know, that is a safe amount that we can get out of there. We can get more, obviously we can get less. <coughs> but we, as a fire department, said this is what it is. This is what we want. You know, One, it's safe, I don't have to worry about, I'm not saying that hose won't break because of that. <coughs> You know, but if it does, it's not because of the pressure that's on it. It's because it's a bad section of hose. All right. Everybody good with that? Yes, we all agree. That's solid. <sighs> what about our aerial master streams? All right. Everybody agree with that? Good. I hear mumbling and da -da -da, I hear da -da. Obviously, I can get less, and we'll talk about getting more. But that is, those are absolutes, right? Those don't change. Those are our maximum. <coughs> Nozzle pressures. If I have a fog nozzle on anything, 
what do I want, what kind of pressure do I want on it? 100 PSI. I don't care what it is. If I'm using a smooth bore nozzle, what do I want? Or? Fifty on a hand line, eighty on a master, right? Everybody agrees with that. Those are those are those never change. We're not changing those. Now, keeping that in mind, we're going to talk to you and teach you how to pump on anything. And it's not even going to be hard. We're firefighters. We can't make it hard. We're firefighters. We break stuff. That's what we do. You know. All right? <coughs> so, the theoretical pressure calculations. To get to our magic gallons per minute, we need to figure out how much pressure we need to put on that water to get there, right? Everybody follow me on that? <coughs> Which is called pump discharge pressure. That's the magic number we want to see on the gauge, right? <coughs> All right, so to get there, we need to figure out total pressure loss, which is friction loss plus elevation loss, pressure loss, right? Friction loss, anytime we take something and move it through something that's not moving, it generates friction, correct? If I'm pushing water through a hose, it's rubbing, right? And it's generating friction. If I'm driving across the road, the tires are moving, the road is not, it's generating friction. When I finally get certified to drive an apparatus on the street and I hit a sign about 20 minutes after that happens, that creates friction, right, Mr. Cruz? <laughs> I heard about that. That's, I think that's funny. I'm sorry. It's okay, buddy. You're not the first or the last that's going to hit a sign immediately after they get the ability to drive on the street. It's okay. <coughs> that creates friction and paint damage. Maybe. <laughs> All right. We need to figure out what that is so we can apply the gallons per minute that we need. Right. <clears throat> it's not hard. It is a mathematical equation. Don't get overwhelmed. <clears throat> this is it. CQ squared times L. All right, C is a coefficient. How many of you guys did not get a handout? So how many more do I need to make? All right, like a quiz, two, a seven and eight quiz and a pump chart. All right. All right, write, write that down somewhere. Write that down somewhere. You got an extra one? Ah, right. right. well, there you go. C is a coefficient for different hose diameters. On the bottom of that pump chart, it lists different hoses, inch and a half, inch and three quarter, uh, two and a half, three inch, I don't know if it does four inch or five, you know, it does five inch, you know. That is where we would plug these numbers in. The coefficient would be that number. <coughs> Q being gallons per minute, <coughs> quantity, Gal you know, gallons per minute divided by 100, just to make it the number easier to work with. So if we were flowing 500 gallons per minute, it would be five, right? That number, and square it, not times two, <laughs> all right? When the little two is up at the top like that, that is squared, not times two. <coughs> times the length in hundreds of feet, and we would divide that by 100. So our most common lay that you will do 90, 6% of the time you ever pump is what? 200 foot cross lay, right? Even if you, even if you know you, I need more than that, you're going to lay it because that's just what you all do. I don't know why, but that's okay. <coughs> all right. So typical 200 foot cross lay. What's the coefficient 
for inch and three quarter hose. All right. What is our gallons per minute? Uh, it doesn't matter which one we go with. 150, we'll do them both. So 150, that's 1.5. What's 1.5 times 1.5? Get your damn phones out. I know y'all got phones. Huh? The co the, uh, look on the bottom of your chart. It is a number that, it, and that number changes, right? Yeah, that's inch and a half, inch and three quarter, two and a half, three inch, and four or five inch, five inch, I think. <laughs> that number, somebody way smarter than me figured out the diameters and made that coefficient the way that is. You know, so that, that those are, set. <coughs> All right, so we said 200 feet, right? Divide that by 100, that makes it 2. What are we at? Where are we at? 69.75. All right. PSI. <coughs> so with that being said, pump discharge pressure is our magic number. This doesn't make our magic number. This is part of the magic number. To get our magic number, we need nozzle pressure plus friction loss or total pressure loss. That equals the magic number that I want to see. So cross lace what? Fog nozzle? So what's that? So that's our magic number, right? Anybody disagree? Applying this <coughs> on a 200-foot cross lay, if I want to get 150 gallons a minute, I need to set my discharge gauge to 169.75, which you're not going to be able to do. So we'll just say 170. All right? Is everybody good with that? No. You are not, you will never, we will never, ever be exact. All right, so... Forget that right now. Don't sit there and think, well, I'm off a little bit. We're getting in the ballpark. We don't work in a vacuum. Everything's, there's too many variables that we're going to do. You know, we've already changed it just by rounding up. <laughs> All right? So don't think, well, this is, da, da, da. we're close. You know, if I took engine two and engine six, who both were manufactured in the same plant at the exact same time, have everything identical to it. If I put them out here on this hydrant, pulled a cross lay and said, this is what it's going to be, and I'm going to put 170 on that discharge, and I put a portable flow meter on it at the tip, it's going to tell me something. We should think it's going to say 150 gallons per minute. It may, it may not. It'll be close. It'll, it may be 145, it may be 152, based on different variables and stuff like that. Do the exact same thing with engine six, and it'd be the same. There, there's too many variables. Don't worry about exactness. That doesn't happen. We don't work in a lab, okay? We are close. This is as close as you're gonna get. That's as close as you need to get, okay? <coughs> so that's, that, by our formula, that's gonna get us our 150 gallons a minute, right? Now, 
look on your little pump chart. <coughs> Up there in the right hand corner where it says friction loss for inch and three quarter hose. Gallons per minute. I want 150 gallons per minute. I got 200 feet. I go down and over, right? What's the number? 70. What did we come up with? 70. That's where these numbers come from. 125's on there as well. <coughs> All right, that's how we get those numbers. Round up. Don't round down if you're doing stuff. If it is not a 10, if it doesn't have a zero at the end of it, go up to the next zero. If it's 142 when you're messing around doing math, you go up to 150. Don't go up to 145. Why would I not want to do that? How many of you have pumped yet? Has everybody pumped? So you've seen discharge gauges. What's that needle do? Does that needle sit at 142? No. It does this all, all day long. You know, just go up to the next 10, whatever that is, and, that'll, and that's good enough. Don't go down. We don't ever want to, I don't ever want to take something away from you. I want to give you everything I can get. So go up to that 10, whatever that is, you know, and you're going to be close because, again, those needles are, are bouncing around a lot. All right? Everybody good with that? Gallons per minute, all right, so we're, um, huh? Yep, and how did I get there, right? All right, so this is C for inch and three quarter hose, right? You know, Q is GPM, which is 150 divided by 100 to make it easy, which that equals 1.5, right? Then I times that by itself, I make it square, that is 225. That's where that came from. Everybody, everybody's good with that, you know. <coughs> and th that, which we're gonna do it again now, you know. <coughs> All right, so our blitz fire, same thing. It doesn't matter, the equation doesn't change. <coughs> so if I'm figuring out for three inch, if I'm figuring out for inch and three quarter, you know, if I'm figuring out for five inch, it doesn't matter. You know, three inch is what? Coefficient is 0.8. What do I, what do I, what's my goal? 500 gallons per minute, right? Divide that by 100 to make my numbers easy. I get five. 5 times 5, 5 squared, is 25, right? Our length, I'll just say 100, divided by 100 is 1. <laughs> what do I get? Yeah. 20, or something really, really close to it, all right? <coughs> Looking again on your pump chart, if you go down there and say, oh, I got three inch and I'm doing this and I want to do this, it'll say 20 or 21 or something. I don't know what. 20 is good. So we know every 100 feet of three inch that we're pumping to, running water through, I need to add 20 pounds of friction loss to get me to my 500 gallons a minute, right? So... If I have 300 feet, what's a blitz fire? What kind of nozzle is that? So that's going to be 100. I need to find my friction loss of my 300 feet. What's that going to be? 60? So on my discharge gauge, that's what I want to see. That's how that stuff goes together. Okay. <coughs> we good? We're follow we're okay for now. We're not
not worried about metric. We don't care about the metric system. All right. <coughs> now, a couple other things to make or to test, you know, and, and we've done tons and tons of different testing on different stuff to see what works and what do, 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 does not work. You know, <coughs> and to be honest with you, anytime you, if you, you know, not necessarily, you know, right now as firefighters, but as you're moving through and stuff like that, and you want to test different ideas or theories that you think you're not sure about, you know, do it. You know, bring your pumper down here. You know, we have inline, you know, pressure gauges. We have inline flow meters at the shop. That's how we figure out what we're, what we're talking about. Testing different things be like, hey, let me see if this works or what's this do. Uh, well, we can't, we don't want to go more than that on our three inch lines because they have a tendency to break, you know, and it's a risk management issue. So we know this is a safe one, you know, mess with stuff. <coughs> but there are different things out there. Uh, a pedo tube gauge, you, you, not with the Louisville Fire Department, has ever messed with one of these because <coughs> we don't use them. Um, but if you've done a target hazard with your company and you put the big hydrant kit with the big metal caps and the tube and then it has a pressure gauge you put on it, that's the exact same thing. It's just easier. You don't get as wet. <coughs> you open up the hydrant and water comes out, gauge goes up, cap goes, what was that reading? And you, get, you tell him what it is. He goes back to the house. He or she goes back to the house, that puts those numbers into... Uh, an equation and it spits out what gallons per minute that hydrant can do, you know, <coughs> or flow meters. We do not have flow meters on our discharges, on our pumpers. We have them on our aerials, the master streams. There's a flow meters on those. You know, they tell you gallons per minute. It spits that number out. It's not a pressure you're looking at. It is gallons per minute. Uh, you know, a little red LED comes up, whatever that number is, that's what you're flowing gallons per minute out of whatever discharge that is, your truck one, truck four, whatever it is. That tells you gallons per minute, all right? <coughs> so don't think that it's pressure. Other things that can cause friction loss <coughs> are appliances, you know, going through... Uh, if we're operating our deck gun off the top of the pumper, you know, and, and the piping and looking at that piping and seeing, okay, well, it comes up and then it does a loop, a hundred, full 180 degree turn and that creates a lot of friction loss. You know, we have to, f you know, factor that in <coughs> on, on what we're looking at. Um, even the blitz fire has a little bit. You know, it's a, it's a very sleek design, so it's not a lot of friction loss, but there is, you know, it comes in and then that angle before it starts spitting out and stuff like that. You know, a hard and fast rule for anything like that, if we're, or if we're messing with them, if we are over, if we're flowing over 350 gallons a minute, we, you know, they, the rule is 25 pounds for the appliance, you know. <coughs> um, with that being said, if you're flowing a blitz fire and you don't factor in that 25 pounds, don't worry about it. It's okay, you know. It's it's not going to be the end of the world. If you're flowing your deck gun and you're like, oh, I gotta add 25, and you don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. We'll figure, you know, it's, it's not going to end, you know, it's not going to cause a disaster at all, you know, but that is something that if, if members or your sergeants or captains or district chiefs are talking about it, on those master stream appliances like that should be 25, add 25 PSI to it, you know, if you don't, we're going to survive, it's going to be okay. The Ys, if we lay two, all right, everybody follow me with that, right? One three-inch line with a Y, two inch and three-quarters coming off, right? 
that is an appliance, but I, don't worry about it because you're not going to be flowing enough for it to really matter. You know, at the most, and if you do it, you know, the hard way, and I do 150 and 150, I'm only going to be flowing 300 gallons a minute anyways. You know, and so I don't worry about that appliance, you know, messing with that. Does it make sense? <coughs> Manifolds, we don't mess with a lot. There you go. Anything under 350 degrees or degrees, that would be hot. Um, <laughs> gallons per minute, don't worry about it. <coughs> Elevation pressure loss. Somebody smarter than me did some theory testing and said, Elevation pressure loss, five-tenths of a pound, so one being one PSI, <coughs> that being 0.5 PSI per foot. All right? Now, that's way too scientific for us. You know, we don't like messing with that. You know, we don't like math. We don't like to do that. What is ours? What do we say on elevation loss? Five pounds per floor, right? How did we get that? What's the average height of a floor? Anywhere between 8 and 12 feet. Split the difference, we'll call it 10. 10 times 0.5 is what? Five. That's where that comes from. You know, FYI, because you all are going to get new people coming in they need to know that. You need to teach them that. No, it's not because I said so. It's because of this. It's 0.5 per foot. Average height of a floor is this. That's why we do five. All right? <coughs> All right, various hose lays. Again, friction loss. We got to figure out friction loss. <coughs> hose diameter, length of hose. CQ squared L, that's friction loss. Total pressure loss is our friction loss if there's any elevation gain in any appliances. So technically, if we wanna make it super more difficult than it needs to be, total pressure loss. You know, 99% of the time, this is all we're really carried about. You know, until we start getting into apartment buildings and stuff, but we already have that factored in, and we'll get there in a little bit. All right? Everybody good? <coughs> now, what if I have to do more than lay my 200-foot cross lay? What if I'd have to lay that, and then I have to lay a 300-footer, because I totally screwed this up, and then a 200-foot blitz fire, and then we really screwed it up, and now I gotta supply an aerial. No. say that's not right I'm doing my jump 1950 do what can we do it why not Ooh, I'm not supposed to. Why not? Mm, nope. That's all I care about. And, and I'm going to get to what Lee just said. I can pump 
as much as the Louisville Water Company gives me. You know, that, that is a fact. It does not change that. Joe is right. Our pumpers are rated at 1,500 gallons per minute. You know, what, that, what does that mean? That means that once a year, our pumpers go to the shop, any pumper, I don't care where you're from, it's not just us, <coughs> hook up a hard suction hose, we drop it in a cistern, and we draft out of it. It has to draft and be able to flow 1,500 gallons per minute. That's how it's tested and certified. That's all that means. If it fails it, then the pump fails, they gotta do some maintenance. If it passes it, great. If it goes over it, whatever, nobody cares. It just has to be at 1,500, all right? That is all that means. It does not dictate how much we can flow out on a water source. We flow out on a water source whatever we can get from the Louisville Water Company. If I take the hydrant, because I did this, at 12th in Kentucky with squirt 17, I can flow 3,200 gallons a minute out of squirt 17 from that hydrant. I know I can because I did it for like eight hours. It sucked. Worst St. Patty's Day ever. All right. I also know that if I take the hydrant at 18th and Nelligan up in Portland, I can only flow about 118 gallons per minute because it's on a dead end main and that hydrant sucks. All right, so don't get confused <coughs> about a pump rating. You know, that's all that is. That's rated at draft to get, keep it certified. If we have a positive water source, we can pump as much as that water will give us, and that's going to vary. You know, we typically have extremely good water in the city. There are a few outliers like 18th and Elegant and stuff, and by no means am I telling you to go find them. You're gonna find them when you don't wanna find them. Just like I did at 18th and Elegant when I said, oh shit, this isn't gonna work at all. <laughs> you know, you'll find that that way. Typically, we're good, all right? So don't get confused. This, absolutely, as long as we, as long as we got the water, we can do this, right? All day long. <clears throat> so, what's that look like? Oh my God, that's too much stuff. No, it's not. All right. It is one of everything we've done already. That's never gonna change. We're not changing. We're gonna change one thing later. This is not hard. You do one at a time. You're not gonna do all these at once anyways. We don't, we're not that fast. You know, we're gonna start out one or two and messing with some other stuff and you know, you're gonna be kind of busy for, you know, depending on how good you are, three to five minutes and then it's all gonna be okay. It's just a bunch of individual things, breaking that down. That's all it is. <coughs> and we've already broke this down. We know that that 200 foot cross lay at 125 gallons per minute is what? 150. So we're gonna throttle this up bad boy up and make that say 150, right? Then they pull the 300 foot cross lay for the second line, what's that gonna be? We'll say 180, is that okay? Because we can't get the fives. All right, we got a 200 foot blitz fire. We know I want 100 on the nozzle and it's 20 per pound or per 100 feet, right? So I already, I mean, this is, okay, yeah, whatever. What's that gonna be? 140, right? And our aerial is gonna be 180. Wait, no, wait. wait. You're, you're, I'm gonna suck you right in. Depends on what? Why does that matter? 
we'll, we'll get, we're going to get there. All right, we're going to get there. You know, I'm not worried, okay, we're saying 180 at the base and I'm getting ahead. We're, we all agree that it's that, right, for an aerial. So I know I need that. So then all I'm figuring is the friction. I can't do it with one three-inch line. Does everybody agree with that? Because our goal is 1,000 gallons per minute. So I have to do two. All right? Am I figuring for 1,000? I'm figuring for what? 500 on each because it's going from two to one. Everybody's good with that, right? You know, so all this is is two more blitz fires, right, for my friction loss. I just need to know how long it is. And we'll say it's 100 feet. It's one. So what's that? 20, yep, but then I need, so I need, this is going to be 20, I'm not, I'm not worried about nozzle, pro, all that other stuff, because we say it's 180 at the base, so, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, I'm not worried about anything else, I want 180 here, for me to get that, all I really need is 180, plus whatever my friction loss is, and that should put me at 180 right there, does everybody agree? So these are going to say what? 200. Everybody agree with that? All right? Now, we're looking at it. We're throwing all kinds of water. The two big gauges at the top of your pump panel. There's one on the right and one on the left. The one on the right is a master discharge gauge. The one on the left is a compound gauge. Some people call it an intake gauge, which is more accurate, because that's what it is. All of the gauges technically on your apparatus are compound gauges. A compound gauge is a gauge that goes below zero, and we put them all on everything, just because it simplifies it. This is an intake gauge, this is a master discharge gauge. This is always going to read your highest discharge pressure. All right? So based on what I got going on, what's this going to be at? 200. All right? This intake gauge tells me my hydrant pressure. It's coming in, da da da, and, it's, and it sits right here, whatever that is. It is what it is. We cannot change that. <coughs> All right, so that's my hydrant pressure. Now, all set, rocking and rolling. I know my master, that's going to be at my highest discharge rate. So if I'm throttled up and I got these open all the way, you know, I want those open all the way and throttled up to 200. If I'm doing that, I got to get these to their numbers. I can't leave these all at 200. That's not a good idea. Somebody's going to get pissed and they're probably going to come out and punch you in the throat. All right. How do I do that? I can't throttle down, right? Because if I throttle down, I lose my 200. All my little handles, I start gating. Instead of it being all the way open, it's going to be open to whatever that point is to put that needle on the number I want. Does everybody follow me? And when you're doing that, and you need to practice this, <coughs> when you're doing that and you're adjusting those in and out, one, don't jerk all your open all the time. You know, when, you start, when we start messing with multiple lines, gradually open those up and watch. Because if I'm already doing this, and I start doing this one, when I start opening that up, what's going to happen? That's going to go up, but what's these going to do? They're going to go down. Does everybody understand that? Because I'm robbing it. I'm taking water away, and it's going this way. So this is going to go down. That's going to go up to fill up, but these are going to start going down. <coughs> takes a little bit of finesse, it's not hard, and don't think you're under any time restraints. It doesn't, we want water flowing, it's gonna flow, we're good. We're, we haven't burnt, nothing's still burning. 
we're, you know, it'll go out. Either we'll put it out or it's going to put itself out. I've been to both, and it really doesn't matter. <laughs> All right? While you're opening that, you're going to have to throttle up. So while I'm doing that, I'm crimping, I'm opening this one up, I'm throttling up to keep this at 200. I don't have to look at these because I know those are my highest discharges and that's what it's going to be. I want that at 200. So while I'm doing that and I'm watching that drop, just kind of throttle up a little bit. Then once that gets to 140 and that's still on 200, boom, done. All right? You're, and that's how that works all, doesn't matter what you come up with or your sergeant or your captain or your district chief. It doesn't, that's it. Literally, that's it. It's one at a time. You're not going to be doing multiple things. <coughs> you know, we're not fast enough to get that stuff in place. You know, the only way we could do that is get it all in place and not do anything and then go, okay, go. <laughs> and then start doing it. You know, which, I mean, you could do that. It'd be awesome practice. You know, but don't, don't get hung up on the amount of what you're doing. You know, because it's, it's one thing times a bunch. You know, that's it. It's not that difficult. You know, we have our inch and three quarter. We have our three inch. We have our five inch, which we'll get to in a minute. It's not that difficult. You know, it's one thing at a time. The hardest thing is literally <coughs> that little bit of finesse with your throttling and your crimping. You know, and, that, and, and, and that's not hard. That just takes a little getting used to, you know, okay? <coughs> now, your pressure relief valve, right? We got those, unless you're on one of the new quints, and then you have the governor thingamajigger. <coughs> um, my pressure relief valve, what, do it, what will it be set at? Two, whatever is on this gauge, right? On this scenario, it's 200 PSI. Whatever your highest discharge is, that's where your pressure, that's where you're gonna set your pressure relief out. If you're running multiple lines, set your relief valve, all right? If we don't, when we start sh shutting different things down, the things that are open are gonna get a, a, a surge. It's not gonna break anything. It shouldn't kill anybody, you know, but it may hurt and it's gonna make somebody mad, all right? So set it, if you're, if you're running multiple operations going on something like this set that relief valve how you do it I don't care everybody has their own methods you know <laughs> one thing to remember don't do all this and then flip it on it's I'm not gonna say it's gonna break it every time but it may it doesn't like being flipped on when it's under pressure when RPMs are up and it's running and stuff, it, it doesn't like that. So one, as soon as you get out of the pump, you get into the habit of any time you're pumping, you get out, you drop your tank, you're getting ready to charge that cross lay, flip that on. Don't worry about jacking it around, just get it on before you start throttling up because it doesn't like doing it under pressure. You know, some people set it before the shift. You know, I, when I was an engine sergeant, I'd pull it out front, I'd make sure the spring worked, I'd exercise that spring, opening and closing, because it gets lime and calcium build up on it and it'll get stuck. I'll do that several times. I would set it at 180 and turn it, and turn it on and leave it on the whole shift. That way I knew I never had to turn it on. It was always on, because I'm not smart and I forget stuff. You know, if I had it set there and it was on, if I only pulled a cross lay that day, I, I did, didn't matter. If I did this that day, still doesn't matter. I'll just crank, it's already on and set at 180, it starts dumping, I'll just crank it up till it closes, right? You know, however you do that, I don't care. Just refrain from getting everything going and then going, oof, I didn't do that, <laughs> you know. Um, get into a habit of turning that on. All right.
Any questions so far? Any answers so far? No. Okay. Sure. Did I mess something up? You sure? You got a look of made you mess something up. Okay. I do. I'm not. It's okay. All right. <coughs> All right. We talked about different friction losses and stuff like that. <coughs> now, getting into fire department connections. All right. All right, sprinkler systems. What do we say for those? All right, does everybody agree with that? Are we adding anything? Nope, all right. Now. Very, very important, all right? There is a difference between supplying a sprinkler system and supporting a sprinkler system. These numbers are for supplying a sprinkler system, all right? And what that means is that there is literally nothing in that system to help boost the, the water coming out of that system. It's all on us. It's all on that pumper, all right? Supporting a system, which is the most common thing you're going to do, that means there is already a fire pump, literally the same thing that's in our pumpers, in a basement somewhere that is doing that for us automatically. You need to know if you're supplying or you're supporting. There is a handful of buildings still running around that, that we would actually supply. Most of the time, you go into a sprinkler system, you will be supporting it. So, with that being said, do everything. Get your three-inch lines hooked up, get your positive water, charge those three-inch lines, and stop. Don't start jacking with your throttle, just leave it at idle and, and wait. All right, because if I already have a fire pump in the building doing this, then I get into it and I automatically start doing this, we're gonna start breaking stuff. Those pipes are like half inch. And they break very, very, very easily. How would I know? No. No. How would I know if it has a fire pump or not? Know your buildings. You know, if you're working overtime, and that's why I say you can't know every building in Louisville. You know, that's why I say practice patience. Because you could be a sergeant at 23s and you're working overtime at engine five and you make this. You know, should you know if there's a fire pump in that building or not? No, I'm not going to sit there and go, why the hell didn't you know that? You know, practice patience. Hook up to it, charge it, don't mess with any throttling and just sit and wait. Let the companies going in, go in, figure out what's going on, see, and, and they're gonna tell you. They're gonna let you know. They're gonna be like, ooh, no, man, we got a fire and that sprinkler head sucks. Hey, man, crank that pressure up. Okay, 20 pounds, 20 pound increments, always. Anybody ever tells you increase the pressure 20 pound increments? No more, no less. No less because we're not going to notice the difference. You know, no more because that's right when we start to notice the difference, and that may be the only thing we need. You know, up or down, if they say that. I'm pretty sure nobody's going to call on the radio and say, hey, man, drop that pressure. It's kicking my, you know, they're just going to gate the nozzle down. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to admit that. <laughs> you know? All right, but 20 pounds, up or down, whenever they ask. Just wait and for that information to come back to you, you know, and because, again, most of the time it's already going to have something in it. 
it will, you're just supporting it. You know, so just sit on it and wait. All right, I know it's hard, but do it anyways. Now with standpipes, what do we got to do? What's our numbers on those? All right. Everybody agree with that? I'm okay with that. Now, and I'm going to mess it again because you're going to be out there all on your own anyways. Nobody's going to be helping you. <coughs> Do the same thing. I don't mind you throttling to 165, you know, because at idle you're not going to be up there anyways. Hook into it. Get, don't worry about your floors or anything yet. <clears throat> Get to 165 and wait. All right? We will not determine what our last number, our end number is going to be. You know, in your high-rise kits, because, and you all know this already, the most important thing in that is an inline pressure gauge. <clears throat> that is the most important thing in that kit. More important than the nozzle. I'll get you another nozzle. <laughs> that ga we need that gauge. That gauge is vital. And that's why it helps eliminate any of our guesswork. All right? Instead of going, ah, it's about this or something, you know, get to here, wait. Let them get set up. They'll lay out their little seven foot section, put the pressure gauge on, put the Y on, start laying everything, turn it on, they're going to see that gauge. That's what we operate off of, nothing else. All right, whatever they say, that's what we try to give them. If it's really, really low, then we're going to increase our pressure. All right, if it's good, we're good. You know, we're already sitting at idle, we can't go less than idle. You know, all right, Is everybody okay with that? Now, <coughs> be careful because one thing, if it is low and they say, man, it's low, give us more pressure. All right, we'll give them more pressure. No, nope, give us more, give us some more, give us some more, give us some more. You know, what do we need to pay attention to? No, well, yes, but what do, what do I not go over? No, no, close. I'm not. What do we test that at? 300 psi. Be careful. All right, because if they keep asking for pressure, you know, more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, because they're not getting it. <coughs> we don't go over that. We hit that. It's not us. It's something else. There's some type of reducer or inhibitor in that standpipe that has been done against building codes and we can't do anymore. All right, I don't care what they say, I don't care who screams at you. It's not, you tell them, it's not me. It's something in here. Because we can't go over that. That's all we can do. Is everybody okay with that? And whatever it is they got, that's what they got. If it's 40 gallons a minute, like it was in Philly, then that's all they got, and they're going to burn the damn high-rise down. That's not on us. <laughs> we can't do more than that unless we start running, which is what you all will be doing, <laughs> five-inch in a stairwell. Because something in the system is inhibiting that flow, you know, which they have reducers in them. They're supposed to. You know, some are external that we can manipulate, the little metal bar in your high-rise kit, be like, oh, yeah, Pat, I know what that is. You know, that chain, we can adjust it. If it's an internal one, we can't do anything about it. We c there's no way we can adjust those. We're, we're, this is it. That's it. We need to have plan B. All right? Does everybody understand that? Don't keep going just because we're like, no, 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 we need more pressure. We stop there. All right? <coughs> something is wrong. There's something in that system 
that is restricting that flow to where they're not getting the pressure they need. And typically it's some type of reducer that the contractors put in and they didn't set them right. And that, and that happens, you know, but that is it. All right, everybody good with that? <coughs> Not like that. We talked about that. We don't have those anymore. Or that. Think about that. Pump dish again. Remember, I wrote that up. That's our magic number, and it's nozzle pressure plus our pressure loss, total pressure loss. <coughs> All right. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Now, now I'll leave that up there. We talked about aerials at 180 at the base. Lee brought up Tower 2. What do we do for Tower 2? 225. Why? No. Oh. No. Somebody dumber than us calculated it, though. Uh-uh. Nope. Explain. What do you mean? They have truck one, truck eight, truck four, quint seven, eight, and nine. They have all that, too. You have what? You have two. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. It has two master stream devices on it, right? It has a smooth bore and it has a fog on it. You know, yes, it has a little trash line up there, you know, insignificant, you know, about that. Don't worry about that. Now, and most people say it's got two, it's got two nozzles on it. Okay. It's got two nozzles on it. Now, what does truck one, truck three, truck four, truck eight, the three quints, do they have, they got one, and then they have piping, right? Because we don't drop, the, we don't get up there like the old days and put the three inch on it and then mount the uh, whatever nozzle we're gonna mount on the ladder and stuff, you don't gotta do that anymore, lucky you. You know, it has a pipe in it that's four inches. I'm going to tell you that right now. <coughs> well, with this and with its two master stream nozzles, does it have two four-inch pipes on it? Mm, you're right. It do, no, it does not. It has one, right? So this part is the exact same. Why 225? Yeah, I can open up as many nozzles as I want. <laughs> no, there is not. You know, it's a number that they come up with, and the re and I'm gonna we're gonna go with, and I'm gonna show you why it's a a bad number. All right, because what other <laughs> myth is there about Tower Two and supplying it? Why? I had one main and I threw 3,200 gallons a minute.
that's unique. No, but yeah, that, I haven't heard that one before. That's a good one. Um, can any pumper supply tower too? Yeah, or no? We're not sure. We don't know. It depends on who you ask. But you are right. It can. All our pumps are the same. They're 1,500 gallon per minute water is pumped. So yes. So people that say, nope, only pumpers with five inch dischargers can supply tower two. No, it doesn't matter. All right. That does not matter. I've got a five today. <laughs> yeah, I'll supply it with the 1972 Grumman that I came in on. <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. All right. <coughs> but somebody decided 225 at the base is what we're doing on this. At least for five minutes, because then it's going to break. Because something, it, that's just what it does. All right. I can, I, the, no explanation. <coughs> so if I take my pumper, I'm in my hydrant. All right. And I lay my five inch line because I have a five inch discharge, right? <clears throat> to supply tower two. You, you, you have all the knowledge you need to know that this is not going to work. All right. What is the coefficient for five inch? What is our gallons per minute? Oh no, you got both of them, that's what we're doing. Right? So our gallons per minute is 2,000. We divide that by what? 100. That gives us 20. 20 times 20 is 400. Man, you guys are killing me. Fuck! <laughs> It's like pulling teeth. I'm going to say 100 feet because that's really far. You know, it may be less. Somebody do the math. Can I go up or down? Do you want me to go to 30 or 40? 40. Let's go to 40. Okay, so my magic number, we're going to say 225 because that's what I want the base. I need my friction loss. You're saying 40. So that's 265, which I can't get, so I'll go to 270. Why can't I do that? Ding, ding, ding. See how smart you guys are? <laughs> I can't do that because I'm exceeding what? I'm exceeding that. All right, so that in itself, and I don't care, it, water does not matter. What's coming in has nothing to do with what I'm getting ready to say. Either I have, I got copious amounts of water. We cannot flow 2,000 gallons per minute on a single five inch line out of Tower 2 because we are breaking that rule. Does everybody agree with that? We can, we can flow a lot of water out of it. We can go up to that. I wouldn't. I would hang back a little bit, you know, somewhere in between 200 and 250, you know, but I'm not going to get 2,000 gallons per minute. Is everybody good with that? <coughs> so keep that in mind when you hear the nonsense of Tower 2. All right. Now, with that being said, can I do it with three inch? Okay, how? Can I do that? Maybe. I can maybe lay four three inch lines to it, or maybe not. I, I know we can. 
we can, right? Because that's 500 gallons of line, and I know I'm not going to mess that one up, right? So that's 100 feet, again, because it's not that far. I got a 100-foot blitz fire going, right? So what's my pressure? 20. So I got 225, you know, because that's what they want. My friction loss. I can do that, right? Because I'm good. I'll just have four. Four discharges at that, at 240, 250. We'll just say 250. Can I do that? Absolutely, I can do that. I can do more than that, depending on my hydrant. <coughs> then I can get 2,000 gallons per minute out of it, right? Safely, until it breaks. Until something goes wrong, and the platform does something weird, and it breaks. You know. <coughs> so yes, you know, keep, it, it, you have the knowledge. It's all, it's extremely simple. Don't let smoke and mirrors and opinions cloud your judgment ever you know if it sounds fishy then it's probably fishy do the math the math does not lie all right and it's not hard you know actually you don't even have to do the math because we already did the math and everything's already set <coughs> so don't get be like oh yeah no you know, if anybody tells you, oh, yeah, we can flow 2,000 gallons per minute out of that five-inch line on the tow, no, you can't, you know, not without breaking rules, you know, not without bending or breaking absolutes. I can do it with three-inch lines and stay within the risk management parameters that we have set on our hose, you know, but I cannot do it with the five-inch, you know, all right. I can do it with a couple five inches, but we don't have any pumpers with two five inch discharges. <laughs> I mean, we would never put two engines into one apparatus. That would, I would definitely, I have a hard enough time putting one engine into that apparatus because I know it doesn't work. <laughs> I know it's gonna break. You know, I don't have a lot of faith in that thing. <laughs> it's let us down many times, <laughs> all right? You know what it's not, so don't ever feel overwhelmed, you know, because depend whatever it is, you know, and don't drink the Kool-Aid, all right? You know what it is. You know, these are facts. They don't change. We comply to those. We don't bend those. We don't manipulate those based on because it has two master stream devices or because that building has whatever on it. You know, this is what we do. No, that doesn't change anything. You know, hydraulics are, is the same, regardless of what it's going through. And all our pumpers are identical, which makes it even easier. <laughs> you know, those pumps are identical throughout. They are the same water as 1,500 gallon per minute pumps from the oldest frontline pumper to the newest frontline pumper. They're the same, all right? <coughs> Only thing difference when you're messing with stuff are the three quints, and they don't have pressure relief valves. They just got the weird little governor thing, all right? Because it wouldn't fit. It doesn't fit in there. <coughs> Real quick with fire department connections, because somebody brought it up this morning. I didn't talk about it to anybody else. What do I do when I'm hooking into a fire department connection and it's not marked right? How do I do that? Am I going to hook into one, two, then three and four? What am I gonna, you know, if I'm gonna, how's that work? How do, 
Hook into all of them. Sounds great. Make it happen. How am I going to do it? The first one and the last one? First and then the two middle ones next? What do you mean? Are we laying in or laying out? Make it easy and say you're laying in. Okay. <laughs> all right. Because we do have five inch now. And this is not as much as a problem as it was when we did not have five inch and we had to lay out. All right. <laughs> I lay in. I'm sitting there. I'm, I, I'm work. It doesn't say this is a sprinkler system. This is a standpipe system. I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to supply both. I want to supply both. All right. Typically, and I cannot say this is going to be 100% correct. Those two go to something. Those two go to something. <coughs> Lee takes one and four. That's fine. You know, I, I do one and three or two and four, but it, it does not matter. I'm getting one line into each thing. All that, so I can get water, at least some water there, quick. All right? So, because I don't want to do this and spend time getting all the water to that and getting no, no water to the standpipe for anybody. Does that make sense? All right. Now, most of the time they're marked. But every now and again, you'll come across a few that aren't. You know, split it. You know, however you do that. One and four, one and three you know, two and three or two and four, you know, they're going to be split somehow like that. All right. <coughs> yeah. The place he's talking about, 4th and Liberty, and 4th and Ali, <coughs> all right? It looks like that. <laughs> You're like, holy, I don't, what in the world? And it is marked weird. It's you got lower levels, you got this wing, you got that wing, you got upper levels and mid levels and stuff like that. All right, <coughs> and it's marked, but you, you know it helps to slow down and read and say, okay, wait a minute, what do I need to do? Because you're not just going to go, I'm going to hook up into all of them. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, because these down here are drains. You know, pay attention to what you're doing. If it's a, if if you look at it, and it's a it's a male coupling, and not a female swivel, don't hook into that. A any any time. I don't care what building it is. Not this building. Any building, because you will see those sometimes, and it'll be male threaded. It won't be the swivel female. All right. That doesn't mean they put the wrong fitting on it. That is a discharge test that they use. When they're testing the system, they hook hose up and water comes out. You know, don't hook up to that and think it's going to work. You know, oh no, it's just wrong. No, it's right that we don't hook up into those. You know, it has to be a female and there will be a swivel when you hook it up that way. All right. <coughs> All right, y'all take a break for a minute.